everybody. How you doing today? Good? Okay, we're going to start off playing a game because it's a good Sunday, right? Who notices something or a few things different in the sanctuary today? Oh, okay, I see lots of hands. I'm going to ask Noah, what do you see different? They painted the lectern, yes. Yes, Matt? Painted the pulpit, yes, so that it blends nicely with the altar back, 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 right? It looks good, right? Yeah, all the little holes and the nooks and crannies got filled in and painted. Thank you to Leslie Clark, who is one of our janitorial people, and to Joy, thank you for all that time you took. Did you notice over here, there's an eagle? Did you ever see that before? Ta-da! <laughs> And, and the fine details, it's not, you might not be able to see on the side, but the fine details on things, ta-da. And over here, we have some nice rosettes that you probably never noticed, ta-da, ta-da. So thank you for that. Um, yes, Joanne? Jesus got a bath? Yay! According to Leslie, who gave Jesus a bath, um, Myron set up some scaffolding and some ladders for her, and Jesus got a bath, and he lost about three pounds. We should have done that on Transfiguration so he could be dazzling. Okay, what else have you noticed about the sanctuary? Yes. The vestments are a little different, these here. 
They're folded in half and put on um, a rod as opposed to being draped over the top and stuck in with push pins that wasn't working and was kind of awful. So they're different. They look a little shorter. Ah, uh, keep looking. Have you noticed in the back of the doors? Ta-da! Ta-da! They're not quite completed from my understanding. I think we have some decorations going on them to adorn them. Am I correct, Paul, on that? Or are they done? Awesome. So more to come on those. Um, what else did you notice? It's been a busy week since I got back from camp. We have air, yep. We have air, um, the air conditioning people were in. I came in Monday and there were about seven air conditioning trucks here. And you didn't notice because you can't see it, but we had plumbers here also because we had to repair a lot of the shutoff valves that had corroded over the years. We also had Connor McKenzie and his dad and grandpa a little bit um, who painted the church main office, the printer, um, copier office, kitchen thing, Roberta's office and Pastor Joyce's office. I think I'm forgetting something. Thank you, Paul. The door in the library, which you can't see from here, but if you go along Sisson, you'll see that that's been changed too. It's been very busy. Ta-da! So thanks to all who have made that happen. I wanted to point those things out to you to let you know that indeed things are happening as we're getting geared up for our 150th anniversary celebration. And I'm very excited that Jesus got a bath. Ah, uh, let's see. Um, we had movie night Friday night, and I understand there was about 30 people here for that, so that was awesome. We even had some visitors from other churches come, which was very exciting. Are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? Joy. Oh, thank you. Yes, there's a card to sign in the gathering area for uh, Liam Petzold. He had some surgery earlier this week. Um, it was to remove some cancer that was in his colon. It's gone. Yay! Ta-da! Um, and he should be back in worship as soon as he's up and feeling better, but he was doing great when I saw him the other day. So that's who the card is for. Um, um, anniversary tickets are still, anniversary celebration dinner tickets are still for sale. I believe Pat, I thought I saw Pat here somewhere. Um, correct? Yep, um, adults are 20, kids are 10, under 5 are free, correct? And if, if um, need be, if you want to come and you can't afford the cost of that, talk to me and I can arrange for some tickets for you for the banquet so you can come to that as well. Is that everything? I'm very excited today because we get to talk about camp and you're going to learn a cool camp song too um, a little bit later on. Ah, I don't see any other announcements. Oh, Karen's here. She came back. Yay! Ta-da! <laughs> Welcome back, Karen. Um, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share that peace with one another. As soon as Marlene gets up and settled here, I invite you to join with us in singing Shall We Gather at the River, hymn number with one voice, 690.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated, and if the children would come forward, we have a message for you today. Good morning. Oh, we're not awake yet, I don't quite think. Are you awake yet, kind of, maybe? Maybe, good morning. Oh, really? Wow. Okay, who went to camp? Who wishes they went to camp? Who's going to go next year? Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, we had a good time at Living Water Ministry Camp. Um, what are some of the things that you got to do when you went? For those who went. Yes, Matt. What was that? Water fun, yes. Waterfront. Which was water fun? Did you have fun in the water? Yeah, waterfront was when they go at camp, they call it downstairs because you go down a bunch of steps and you're at the waterfront of a lake. What's up? How many steps? 78? 70. 70 steps. And they're all different sizes and depths, so you have to think, especially if your eyeballs are old and you wear bifocals. <laughs> and it's dark. When it wasn't when you went down, yes. What else did you do while you were there? Yeah. The older kids got to do high ropes and low ropes, and we're going to learn about that during the sermon. It's a little scary, but good. Um, were you the only kids there? No? How many kids would you think were at camp? There were like lots. Yes. Did you know all of them when you got there? No. no. Just some of them, right? Yeah. Has anybody ever gone to a place where you didn't know the people? Yeah, yeah. Where did you go where you didn't know all the people? School. Yeah, right. When you get a new class and a new teacher and ugh, if, you're the, if you're a new kid in the school, you know nobody, right? And what happens by the end of the school year? You know lots of people. Right, exactly. Well, at camp we got to learn about meeting new people, doing some fun activities, eating some really good breakfasts. My favorite was French Toast Day. Yes, that was day one breakfast. And when you walk up into the dining hall area, you could smell the French toast wafting out of the windows. And it was delicious. Yeah, I know, right? Let's all just go have breakfast. Not yet. Um, so we also learned songs at camp. And we learned a version of Kumbaya that I actually like. It's never been a favorite song of mine because it made me sad to sing it, right? Well, we have an upbeat version for that and the kids are going to teach all of you. So we're going to have you go into camp mode, pretend you're at camp, let loose, have a good time, and we'll see how we're doing at the end. Okay, are you ready? What's that? We are at campfire. Oh, you're the counselors and you're the campers? Oh, so that means we have to do what you say, right? Yeah? Okay, you're going to teach us what to do? Yep, I think um, Ron, I lost where Ron was. Do we have the microphone, Ron? Do we have the handheld somewhere? I'm sorry, I didn't think of it until just now. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Okay, who's going to teach us? Maddie, you're going to teach us. Okay. Do a check test one, two in here to make sure you hear it. Put it right up there. One, two. 
Check one, two. Try, try it again. No. Is it picking up? Okay. All right. Ooh, Paul's going to amp it up because we're at camp and you got to be loud at camp. Okay. All right. So you're going to tell them what to do with the hand motions? Yeah. All right. All right. You ready to learn a song? Yeah. Are you ready to learn a song too? Yeah. Maddie, where do you need us to be while the counselors teach us what we're going to learn? We need to stand up. If we're able to stand up. Okay. So we're going to stand up. And for those who don't know the song, should we be facing you so we know what to do? Okay, and if you could go up on the top level there, people will see you much better. All right, so for the, for the youth that weren't at camp, do you want to come down so you can see what we're going to do? Because we have hand motions. All right, let's see. All right, as soon as Paul says we're a go... All right, do a check test one, two, Maddie, for me. One, two. A little bit more. One, two. Oh, keep talking. I'm going to turn the fans down. One, two. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. So make sure you hold the microphone just like that so we can hear you, and we're all going to sing and help along. Right, campers? Yes. Awesome. She needs hands for the hand motions, of course. My fault. Here, I'll hold you. I'll hold you. <laughs> All right, Matt. There you go. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Somebody sing and Kumbaya, oh, somebody singing, Lord. Kumbaya, oh, somebody singing, Lord. Kumbaya, we're singing wind, rain, fire, storm. Kumbaya. That's wind, rain, fire, storm. Kumbaya, right? Yeah. Okay. Olé. Olé. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Somebody's praying, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, somebody's praying, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, somebody's praying, Lord, kumbaya. We're singing wind, rain, fire, storm. that one again? Can we have them sing that to, again so they can yell the wind, rain, fire, storm since that's the best part of the song? Yeah? All right. So we're going to do somebody's, what's the, dancing. So dancing is the next one. So somebody's dancing, Lord, kumbaya, right? Okay. Do the wind, rain, fire, storm so we know what's coming. Wind, rain, fire, storm. Wind, rain, fire, storm. Are we ready? All right. Go ahead. Right kumbaya. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Somebody dance, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, somebody dance, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, somebody dance, Lord, kumbaya. We're singing. Awesome. 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 They did awesome. And we learned a lot at camp. Um, let us pray. Are you ready to pray? Do, ooh, does, does one of you want to lead the prayer today? So you don't have to hear me talk all morning? No? No? Looks like it's going to be me, folks. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the gift of this day for our youth. 
who are willing to take risks and go out to learn things in the world and to explore your love that's so generous. We thank you for campers young and old who learn new songs and for our community who supports one another as we grow in our faith together. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Our first reading is this morning is from Ecclesiastics 1, 2, 12 to 14, and 2, 18 to 23. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be with, busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our second reading is from Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abuse of language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In what renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you are able for the gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to the 12th chapter of St. Luke beginning with the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. 
And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the, of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. And for those of you who are able to see the screen, yay, and if you can't, talk to me later. But the picture we have up here that the window is so helpfully wiping out. Um, we have telephone poles and trees that are set in about a circle shape. And they're probably about 50 or 60 feet tall, give or take. 40 feet, thank you, Eric, 40 feet tall. And they have challenges, rope challenges across them where people climb up a pole and then you stand on a platform that's about this big and then you choose the challenge you want to walk across that high up in the air. Who wants to go? How about folks in your prime of your day when life was comfortable and gravity didn't hurt so much would like to go? Okay, that's better. That's better. So what that's a picture of is the high ropes challenge that you heard mentioned earlier. And that's one of those rite of passage places that you get to go to once you hit sixth grade and older. Um, if you could click the slide for me, please. What we have here is another challenge. Um, you can't really see it again, but what it is, you have two pictures and this one here you have a person laying on the ground with their arms crossed over their chest as thin as they can be, tight as they can be, like this. And you lay on the ground and um, the kids that you got to know just a day or two before, perhaps, pick you up. Six or eight or ten of them, maybe. Now, does anybody here want to lay down on the floor like that and we'll get a bunch of people to pick you up? Who wants to do that? Yeah, the kids, you want to be the lay down person? Yeah, who wants to be the one to pick them up like that? Yeah, we got one. Oh, two, three maybe. Okay, and yeah, we're not going to do that. Now, now you want to raise your hand, don't you? So the person laying on the ground has to trust the people around them to pick them up. And then the way the wires are that you can't really see on the screen, there's a wire across the top and across the bottom, and there's wires crisscross or ropes crisscrossed to look like a spider web. And the challenge is for all of the kids on one side or the group on one side to go through the spider web and onto the other side without touching any of the ropes. So the group picks you up. You're laying flat and you either go head first or feet first through the, through the spider web for someone to catch you on the other side. What do you do if there's only one person on the other side? We can't give it away. We can't give it away. Okay, next slide please. I'll let you think about that for a second. So this is another high ropes picture. And that's Coco Marsh that's up there on the top. Um, she's up at the top and you can see there's these little square, little <laughs> square pieces of wood that you have to step one after another, after another, all the way across. Mind you, you're double clipped into a wire above you when you're wearing a helmet, but when you're that high up, down is really far. Uh, next slide, please. This one, I believe, is another high ropes picture. And there's a person in blue right up here above me who's getting ready to walk on a platform that's about, what do you think, Eric, about this wide? Smaller? How, how wide is it? About two feet? 
about two feet wide and about, what, four feet long? Somehow you have to make it from one of the platforms down a rope wire onto that platform, and then, is that the one where the ropes hang down? Okay. So after you do the one, what happens? The little platform in the middle. And then you do the one with the hand ropes. And that one, you have a wire that you're on, like this, one foot in front of the other. And you have ropes that hang down that are different heights. And you have to grab those and get across that way. Who wants to do that? It looks hard. Okay, do I have another slide? Oh, okay. So that's the slides. So what's the point of this and why is it in our sermon? One, because I get to talk about camp. Two, because of the things we learn at camp and how it ties in with our gospel. The last verse of our gospel. So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich toward God. That was running through my mind while we were at camp. One, because preparation for sermon is good. But two, looking for places where camp fits into that. And it was all over the place. So think about this for a minute. You're struggling in life with something. How helpful would it be if someone were to say, ha ha, you're struggling. Ah, serves them right. See, you get what you get. How does that make you feel? Or you mess something up. Even though you tried your hardest, you couldn't do it for whatever reason. You didn't even mess up. It just didn't work. See, told you you couldn't do that. Why'd you even try? <laughs> I did it and you didn't. Right? That doesn't make you, like you're all looking like you're feeling really upset by those. And you should because those aren't very nice things. So here's the gig. When the kids arrive at camp, one of the first things they start to do with those counselors is bond. They start building relationships right away, from the get-go. They learn trust building by laying on the ground and being taught how to lift somebody as a group so that you don't drop them and hurt them terribly. I myself would not want to be dropped four or five feet on the ground. You trust those people to lift you up. Just like when you're working together to pick someone up, you trust that you're all going to communicate and talk and lift that other person up to accomplish the goal. So they work on team building skills, and some of that team building is low ropes. One of the low ropes, which I did not show you, there's like a big log in the center, we'll say it runs this direction, and a huge long teeter-totter on it. It's like a platform, kind of looks like a chunk of dock, actually, that they put on a, on a pivot type thing. The challenge is for all of the people in your group to get on this unlevel surface and to balance all of you on that so that it doesn't touch the ground. So the first person gets on, oh, and you have to sing row, row, row your boat while you're doing it too. The first person gets on and, okay, it's pretty okay. They get their legs about them and it's fine. But as each person gets on, the people that are on that platform have to move a little bit as the weight gets distributed. And the next person can't get on until you've balanced that each, every time. And then you move into the high ropes the next day. Do you know why you wait? Because you've built your team and you need help getting up those high ropes. Let me tell you step one of the high ropes. You get your helmet, you get your harnesses, you get trained how to clip on and be safe. They go through that several times until everybody has it. You don't want your clips above your head going the same direction. You want them opposite each other. Why, Eric? Because if one comes off and the other one's going the same way, you're falling. So you want opposite directions so that if one messes up, you've got the other one to catch you. You also learn to trust the, to trust the counselors and the, the people who are up on those platforms. There were about three. 
and a couple of people, counselors down below, working the ropes and stuff. So if you're going to climb up on the high ropes course, you get to climb about a 20-foot aluminum ladder that's balanced against the telephone pole. Anybody climb a ladder that's against the telephone pole? Yeah, what happens? It's kind of wiggly, right? And that's scary, especially when you're little and probably haven't been on a ladder ever in your life. And some of the kids had a hard time getting three and four rungs up before they got scared. And guess what the kids did that were in their group? They cheered them on, exactly. You can do this. One more step. You got this. These kids who had only known each other just a few days, encouraging one another as they get to the ladder. One student can only get up about maybe six or seven rungs. And he had to get down. That happened actually a couple of times. I was with two groups. A couple of times. And they would get off and they were just shaking. And that freaked them out. You ever get a huge rush of adrenaline and your body shakes? It scared them because it's weird. It's okay. We encourage them. It's okay. It's just adrenaline. It's fine. We had one person who couldn't do it. She got part way up and, and just completely shut down. I can't do this. I'm too short. That was her way of comforting herself. Never mind that there were two people up on the ropes already that were shorter than her. She was too short. We had some kids who went right up. Eric. <laughs> he did awesome. And did people still cheer you on even though you were doing a great job? Yes. I think you did the whole course almost twice, maybe. Yeah, you had a good time. And how'd you get down? You ziplined, right? Yeah, it's fun, right? Some of the kids who couldn't make it, get this, they tried a second time. And they did that because the kids that were sitting on the benches waiting for their turn or who had already gone were encouraging them, saying, it's okay, when you get to the pole off of the ladder, make sure you have your right hand and your left foot pushing and pulling at the same time. And then switch sides. That's how I got to the top. And then when you get to the platform, it's weird because it sticks out and you got to get up and around it. That's before you even started everything fun. We had one person get as far up as the platform and they're like, I'm done. And down they came. And you know what? They still got a good job. People left feeling amazing because they helped each other out. When all of the kids got through that, that wire spider web thing, by the way, some crawled through. That's how the first couple got up through it. Some crawled through. When they all made it to the other side, when they all accomplished what they could do on the low ropes and the high ropes, they felt amazing. They shared that trust with one another. They counted on one another in that community to li literally lift each other up. No matter what height it was they were on for the spider web, for the low ropes, for the high ropes. Imagine if they had kept all of that encouragement for themselves. We did have one of our youth who was on the high ropes part where you have a swing that's about this wide with ropes. And the board's about like that, I would say maybe four to six inches, Eric, seems right? Yeah, yeah. There's about eight or nine of those in a row and you have to step holding ropes on each of those swings all the way across. And one of our youth got part way through and said, come on, you can do this, telling herself. And she did. And everybody's like, yeah, you can do it. If the rich man in our parable had stored up all of his faith and all of his stuff and worried about that, he missed out. He missed out on being a part of God's community. He missed out on so much more riches than what he would have saved in his barn. The treasures. The true treasures are the things that we have when we build relationships, when we lift one another up. 150 years ago, we had our church founders, 12 of them, who had a dream, 
who had a deep faith, who wanted to start a church where they could worship our Lord and Savior Christ because community was important to them. Being a body of faith was important to them. And do you think while they sat around, they said, oh, we can't do this. Eh, let's just not even try. Eh, we'll go to the church down the road. They didn't do that. They lifted one another up. And here we are today, a community of faith who have youth who went to camp and got excited and a pastor who's super excited about camp. Because that's where the foundations of faith really take root. In this place, in this community, in the community outside at the camp. Our youth had the opportunity during catechism class every day that I and another pastor co-taught. They had the chance to meet kids from another congregation. They only had three people. We had a total of five. And as soon as we sat down at that table, even though they didn't know each other, they were like this. It was amazing to watch. They worked on projects together. They had a good time. And I'll tell you, I don't know if the kids got more out of it or the other pastor and myself hearing their answers, which were profound. That's what being a church is. Lifting one another up, even in the hard times, of course in the great times. Our church founders did it 150 years ago and we're still here. Last week was nuts with stuff being fixed and upgraded and all of that stuff and my head was on a swivel. But it's good stuff. I leave you with one thought. One of the girls who was having a very hard time climbing that ropes course, the high ropes course, going up the pole, gave it a second try, got part way up beyond the ladder this time and started to freak out. She felt safe freaking out and making it very known to all of us around her what her concerns were. And the youth started singing. Remember that Kumbaya song you learned a little bit ago? They added their own lyric. Instead of somebody's crying Lord, which was one of the lyrics, they named the person and they put climbing in there instead. So and so's climbing Lord, Kumbaya. Somebody's climbing Lord, Kumbaya. And the more scared she got, the louder they sang. And she got farther. That's what we need to do for one another as followers of Jesus. Let everybody know when we're freaking out appropriately. And then the rest of us lift one another up so that we can go one more step higher. Amen. Thank you.
may be seated. We now ask the congregation to lift those names aloud for whom you would have us pray for this day. Bill? And I lift up Leon. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for blessings. We pray for peace comfort for our families, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. We lift up those names we named before you this morning. Only you know those who are hurting, grieving, or facing an unknown future. Continue to lift up Leon, Amy, Rosemary, Diane, Marv, Ruth, and the Gwynn family. Bring them love, healing, and patience when they experience discouragement. Let them draw strength from your presence. You are our Savior, beautiful Savior, source of all hope and abiding faith. Truly we love you, proudly we serve you, redeemed forever by your grace. Merciful God, Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O Lord, into your tender mercy and grace. In your steadfast love we pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please rise for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And please receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 784, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. 